So last week I made a video about my first time voting experience for the presidential elections 2020 and a lot of people asked me in the comment section on how I became a US citizen, what was the process like and there were several other questions. So in this video I will answer the following questions. So the first question I will answer in this video is how I became a citizen, what was the process and how long it took. Second question I will answer is how I prepared for the citizenship interview. Third question I will answer is that what kind of experience I had going through that citizenship interview, what kind of questions they asked, and I will share my personal experience and tips in that process. And finally, I will also answer why I decided to give up Indian citizenship and take US citizenship. Hi, this is Chaitanya Sambhara. I'm a faculty at the College of Business, University of Texas Arlington, and this is my personal account and personal experience on how I became a US citizen. So either you are a born citizen or you become a citizen through your parents. And if these two cases do not apply to you, then you must be a green card holder for a certain period of time before you can apply for citizenship. Now, how long should you need to be a green card holder? Well, that depends. If you have been a green card holder and have been serving in the military for two years, you can apply for citizenship right away. And the next is if you are a green card holder and you have been married to an American citizen for at least three years and you got your green card through marriage, then you need to only wait for three years and then you can apply for citizenship and all other processes to the best of my knowledge, they need to be a green card holder or a permanent resident in the United States for five years and only then they can apply. Now, how soon can you apply? You can apply at most 90 days prior to your second, third or fifth anniversary, whichever of these three anniversaries applies in your case. In my case, I waited for five years and on June 29th, I became eligible because that is when my 90 day window started. And guess what? I had all my application ready and prepared and packet ready to be shipped on June 29th morning itself. So on June 29th morning, I woke up went to the post office and mailed my naturalization application. So let us consider June 29th to be day zero. That is when I applied for American citizenship. The next day, my package was delivered. Seven days later, the checks were encashed. And on July 8th, on day nine, I received a notification that priority date has been set. July 16th was my day 17. That is when I received a letter with my biometrics appointment. And on July 25th, which is 26 days after I had applied, I went for my biometrics appointment. So now when you go for your biometrics appointment, they take your fingerprints and they also give you a booklet, which is this booklet, where you have 100 questions that are asked in citizenship interviews. Now what these 100 questions are? Now these 100 questions in the booklet cover a variety of topics that include US history, US geography, US civics, that also includes US constitution and governance and such topics. And although they give you a booklet, but you can download a soft copy from USCIS website for free. 99 days after my biometrics was completed and 125 days after I had applied for citizenship, I got a notice that my interview has been scheduled. And on November 5th, which is 129 days after I had applied, I got a notice by mail with my interview date for December 8th. So between November 5th and December 8th, I had 33 days to prepare for my interview. And I did exactly that. I went through each one of these 100 questions. Although I knew a good number of these questions, I was not all that familiar with around, let's say 30, 35 questions. So I had to learn and go through those questions very carefully. And over and beyond that, there are a certain number of questions which cannot be printed and therefore they give you a separate page which includes questions like who is your governor who is your state representative and so on right because the answers to these questions depend on which state you live in and the current people who are in those positions and therefore they give you now it is very important to practice well for your interview what i used to do is that i used to approach my friends and used to give them the booklet and used to ask them to ask me 20 random questions from the book and if I got any question wrong, I would revise that question again. So I think I practiced maybe around five to 10 times and then I was ready to face the interview. On December 8th, 162 days after I had applied for citizenship was my day for interview. 
Now I was really prepared. I was ready with a big folder with all sorts of documents. In fact, this is the folder that I had prepared where you can see all the kinds of documents that I took with me to my interview. And I was prepared for any eventuality. Whatever questions they asked, I should be prepared with the proper documentation if the need be. Now on December 8th, my interview was scheduled at 9.30 in the morning and I reached that place by around 8.45. So I was 45 minutes too early. And when I reached there, I saw that I was possibly the only person who was well-dressed. A Lot of other people were dressed just in shorts and a normal t-shirt and they had come for their citizenship interview. And I would not recommend behaving like that. Treat the entire process with utmost respect. And then when my time came, the interviewer came outside and asked me to follow her. And the moment she saw me, she thanked me for showing the respect and for dressing up well. And then the interviewer took me to her office and then she made me take oath of only speaking the truth. And that is a normal process. And then they ask you to seat and they ask you for your passport and your green card and the process begins. So she had a computer in which the scan of my application was there. And then she started to ask every single thing about my application which covered absolute basic things such as is this your first name is this your last name is this how you spell it what is your date of birth what is your social security number she would verify every single piece of information with me and then came the long process of asking a variety of questions that are there in the application and these are a very interesting questions take a look have you ever been a member of communist party totalitarian party terrorist organization have you ever advocated overthrow of any government and so on? Have you been a member of German Nazi party? Well, between 1933 and 45, I would not guess that such people would be interviewing for citizenship in this day and age, but they still ask such questions. Then they ask questions like, have you ever been involved in any kind of genocide, torture, killing, or trying to kill someone? Have you been ever a member of military, self-defense unit, guerrilla group, militia? And then you have some very interesting questions which is, have you ever committed or assisted to commit a crime of offense for which you are not arrested? Have you ever been convicted of a crime or offense? And so on. And these questions are very interesting. When they ask you, have you been a habitual drunkard? Have you smuggled controlled substances? Have you been married to more than one person at the same time? All these questions that they ask, I'm amused by these questions because who would say that, you know what, in my citizenship interview, I will come out clean. <laughs> Doesn't happen like that, right? But they still ask such questions. After she was done asking all these questions, she then asked me if I had traveled outside of the US in past six months. I told her that I had. I had gone to Canada for a few days. And then she asked me, tell me what dates you went and how long you were gone. I did not remember that. And I struggled to recall that answer. But then one thing I had done very good is that I had kept a complete track of all of my outside of US travels for last many years. I always knew what date I left the US, what date I entered, what was my port of entry and where I had gone. And thankfully I had printed all that in a piece of paper and I had that paper handy with me. And this is how my document looked like. And if you can see, everything is nicely documented. And then I gave her my printout. Now an important point, why do they ask where you had traveled? The point is that if you're a green card holder, you cannot stay outside of the US for very long. If you do, you lose your green card. So therefore it is very important for them to know what all dates you went out, what all dates you came back so they can calculate how long you were gone for. And then she had a small chit chat with me about why I was going to Ireland, what I plan to do there, what kind of research I do, what kind of research paper I'm presenting in the conference in Ireland and so on. And then came time for English test. It is requirement for US citizenship that you can speak and write English. And then she gave me a piece of paper which had a written sentence and then she asked me to read it out. That paper read who lives in the White House and I read who lives in the White House, right? And then she asked me to write on a piece of paper, the president lives in the White House. And I wrote it, the president lives in the White House. And she said, okay, you have passed the English test. Now let us start your interview questions. Now, although the booklet has 100 questions, you are asked only 10 questions and you need to get six questions right. If you get the first six questions right, 
they don't ask you any more questions because you have already qualified so i will tell you what questions i was asked i was asked six questions i got them all right and therefore my citizenship interview was a success the first question she asked me was what promise do you make when you become a u.s citizen and the answer is loyalty to the united states and bearing of arms for us the second question was who is the governor and i gave the answer of the current governor at the time the third question was what movement tried to end racial discrimination in the us and the answer was civil rights movement the fourth question was where is statue of liberty and the answer was new york harbor in the fifth question she asked me name two us national holidays and i named four memorial day veterans day thanksgiving and christmas and the final question she asked me was who was the first president of the United States? And I answered George Washington. And then I cleared my interview. And once you pass the interview, they give you a letter saying that you have passed the interview and you will get a notice for oath ceremony. On December 20th, 174 days after I had applied, I got a notice that my oath ceremony has been scheduled for January 13th. And one thing I did before going for my oath ceremony is that I sat and memorize the whole national anthem. I think it is very important that when you take citizenship of a country, you really need to know the national anthem of that country. In the case of US, it is Star Spangled Banner. Now what happens at the oath ceremony is that you go there, they give you some basic documents informing about your rights, your duties and so on. And then they take your green card away. In the oath ceremony, they gave me these two booklets. And then they make you take the oath where you swear allegiance to the United States and then they distribute your citizenship certificates. So here are some of my pictures from my oath ceremony. Now one thing I did is that I had prepared all my documentation for passport application so the moment i took my oath i came directly to my home scanned my citizenship certificate and then immediately went and shipped my passport application two weeks later on january 26th it had been seven months since i had filed my application i had my us passport in hand now another thing that i did is that in that time i prepared my entire application for oci card overseas citizen of india card and the day I got my passport in hand, the same day I applied for OCI card. And the OCI process took two months because first they need to cancel your Indian citizenship. They need to accept that you have taken American citizenship. Then they need to start the whole process of OCI where your documents are sent to New Delhi and then they are shipped back and then you are given your OCI card. And now that I have my US passport and my OCI card, I can live in India if I like to and I can live in the US if I would like to. And the day I received my OCI card, I felt that my immigration journey has finally ended and now I can even travel to India without need for a visa. So this was my journey of US citizenship. Now an important question is that why did I give up my Indian citizenship? See for all practical purposes, I had been living in the US for many years now, right? and I had a proper career and life here already. Now, if I even wanted to leave the US and go to India, but if I change my mind later, coming back to the US can be a long immigration headache again. And I did not want to go through that. Therefore, I felt that getting a US citizenship and getting an OCI card can actually make things easy. And why I say that? Because OCI card is a very powerful document. It is in fact better than American green card in many ways. Why do I say that? American green card expires. OCI card is for life. American green card is no longer valid if you stay outside of the US for a certain amount of time. You have to be in the US. Whereas there are no such restrictions on OCI card. You can stay outside of India for an indefinite point of time and then you can come and stay in India for indefinite amount of time. There are no problems there. In fact, you can work for any company that you like. The only restrictions are that you cannot run for a government office, you cannot fight elections, you cannot buy industrial or a farming land, and then you cannot take jobs such as judges and other government jobs. And I had no plans for looks of elections and I had no plans to become a farmer or an industrialist in India. Therefore, I decided that 
taking US citizenship was easier also because now I could travel to a number of countries without the need for applying for a visa. I had traveled to Europe before, I had traveled to New Zealand before and then I remember uh, how much hassle I had to go through applying for a visa for these countries. The moment I got my US passport, I could travel to many of these countries without any visa issues. And then I could also travel to India without any problem because now I had my OCI card. And therefore, I strongly recommend that if you become a US citizen, definitely apply for OCI card and not go to India on a visa because your visa keeps expiring every few years. Whereas this OCI card is valid for life as I had mentioned. Thank you for watching. Jai Hind and God bless the United States of America.